Yes, and we have a non-Muslim brother. Yes, the most welcome brother. I'm Christopher. I just want to know because the Holy Quran says, believe in the messenger, Prophet Muhammad. And the Holy Bible says, those who believe in Jesus will have eternal life. And uh, both, as according to the Quran, both of them are messengers of God. And uh, I want to know, where did Jesus make his mistake? Uh, without, uh, that means, where did he make any mistake that he is unable to save the people? Brother, that's a very good question. The Quran says, believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Bible says, believe in Jesus, he will give eternal life. So where did Jesus make a mistake? So according to the Quran, both of them, where did he make a mistake? Brother, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never made any mistake. It is the church which made a mistake. According to us, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is one of the mightiest messengers of God. When Jesus says that, that I am the way, the truth and the life, no man cometh unto my father but through me is correct. That means you are the messenger of God. Same thing what Prophet Muhammad said. At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, according to the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 6, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto to my father but through me. That means if you follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you will go to your father, that means you will go to Jannah, you will go to paradise. Eternal life means paradise. Similarly, if you today, but Jesus Christ also said, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Gospel of John chapter 16, verse number 7. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. Talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So today as a Christian, if you really love Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Jesus Christ never made a mistake. It is the church which says Jesus is God. Jesus Christ never claimed divinity. As I mentioned earlier, if any Christian can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. It is the church which has a mistake. Not Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. In fact, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 38, I cast out devil with the spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the finger of God cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, is a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is a Muslim. He never claimed divinity. And it is clearly mentioned in the book of Acts. Chapter number 2, verse number 22, that ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you are witness to it. So never did Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claim divinity. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was never wrong. It is the false understanding of the Bible. So I... As a believer in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a person who loves Jesus, peace be upon him, I say that I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. If Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 20, Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy but to fulfill. For until the heaven and the earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. For whosoever shall break one of the least commandments and teach men to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach the same will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Unless the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees exceeds the righteousness. Unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, you cannot break a single law or a title of the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, chapter number, verse number 7 and 8, that you should not have spoke. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8, you should not have spoke. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, you should not have spoke. The Christians have spoke, but the Muslims don't have spoke. 
It's mentioned in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, and the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 8, that you should not be drunk with wine. We Muslims don't have alcohol, but the Christians have alcohol. Jesus Christ, peace be upon me, is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke that he was circumcised on the eighth day. The Muslims are circumcised, most of the Christians are not circumcised. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. We love Jesus Christ. We respect him. We revere him. We follow him. But we don't worship him. Because he was the messenger of God and was not God. Hope that answers the question, brother. So do you believe that Jesus is the messenger of God? Yes, sir. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? I, I don't. Because, you don't? Because I believe in the Bible. But Bible says in the Gospel of John, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Who is this person, Jesus Christ, peace be upon talking about? Who? Haven't you studied your Bible? Yeah, no, he has spoken about the Holy Spirit of the okay, Lord. Okay, very good. That means you know your Bible now. You are saying this spirit of truth, what Jesus Christ is speaking about is the Holy Spirit. Go a few verses before. Gospel of John chapter 16, verse number 7, it says that it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. The criteria for this spirit should come is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should depart. For if I go away, shall I send him? The Holy Spirit was already there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came. He was also there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was there. He was there in the womb of Elizabeth. He was there when Jesus was being baptized. So how can this be the Holy Spirit? Tell me. That means you don't understand the... Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I go, shall I send him? So the requirement of the Spirit of truth should come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should depart. When Jesus Christ is there, this comforter cannot come. Holy Spirit was already there when Jesus was there. So how can you say this prophecy refers to the Holy Spirit, my dear brother? Can you help me to understand the Bible? Yes. It doesn't refer to the Holy Spirit. It refers to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And his prophecy is also mentioned in the Old Testament. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. In the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. In the New Testament, Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 26. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse number 7. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse number 12 to 14. All these references are talking about no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I have given a talk on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the Bible. Now I am asking you, if you believe in the Bible, when Jesus Christ has prophesied the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, why don't you believe in Jesus that Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger? Why? That means you believe half the teachings of Jesus Christ is not complete? Because, uh, because uh, the teaching uh, says, uh, I'll send you a comforter. But he, he never mentioned about a person or any any name was indicated okay. on there. Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. I'm quoting in Hebrew. His by name is mentioned. Muhammad is the name. Im is for respect. They say he's altogether lovely. O daughters of Jerusalem. His name is mentioned also in the Old Testament. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Now do you believe? I'll no. I, I'll refer it. I'll You'll refer have to it. ask your church first. No, no, not the church. Not the church. Who will have to ask? I'll, I'll go through it and I'll, I'll confirm myself. So how long will you take to confirm? Okay, tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Fine, I'm going there after tomorrow. So by tomorrow morning, you can ask the organizer, contact me. Fine? Sir. Either you accept Islam, or if you can't prove, then if you prove Jesus is God, I'll accept Christianity. If you cannot, you accept Islam. Praise the Lord. Dr. Campbell did first attempt to bring up supposed false facts uh, pertaining to the Quranic views on the universe, and you did refute these accusations. However, it was not addressed what the Bible says about the shape of the earth and its other aspects. 